a former city councilman uh, representing uh, the, the uh, let's see, Sherman Oaks south of Ventura Boulevard. Now he is in the State Assembly and he represents the Sherman Oaks area. And he's going to give us an update on what is happening in Sacramento as it affects all of us. And it's uh, Assemblyman Michael Fuhrer. Actually, when it was my district, it was north of Ventura Boulevard, way out there. Um, so listen, it's great to be here. Uh, and I wanted to share with you a little bit about um, our activity together, my work on your behalf in the last year, and some things that are about to happen as well. It was actually a very productive session. The session, the session concludes uh, in September. And so we just finished. And uh, here are some things that I worked on. Before I start, though, Damien Carroll is my terrific district representative. And Damien deserves a round of applause. And Damien is holding up the sign-up sheet for my electronic newsletter. We don't inundate you with stuff. Many of you have said how much you appreciate getting my emails tonight. And if you want to get on that list, it's usually informative and only nominally self-serving. So please, uh, sign up with, uh, on the sheet back there as you leave. So this past year, I've been trying to focus, as you know from previous meetings, on the issues that are the biggest issues that we have. So I wrote, for example, two years ago, the measure that became Measure R, $40 billion for transportation improvements for our region. I wrote a law that we discussed here the last time I was here to break the link between toxics and cancer by giving the state authority that most people think it already had but didn't to get cancer-causing chemicals and products off our shelves. This year, I wrote legislation that's designed to combat a very serious public safety issue. That's the issue of drunk driving. 200,000 people are arrested every year in our state for drunk driving, and 45,000 were convicted before. 1,500 people a year die at the hands of drunk drivers. So I wrote legislation that was the number one priority in the country for Mothers Against Drunk Driving. It's a bill that for the first time will require that if you're convicted of drunk driving, you have to have an ignition interlock device installed on your car. If you're not sober, your car won't start. Very important legislation. I also wrote bills this year on other key issues. We have a water crisis in our state. We all know that we're going to have another 20 million people in California in the next 25 years or so, but we don't have any more water, right? Same water the dinosaurs had when they were here. So I wrote legislation as part of a very successful water package that requires a 20% reduction in water use in cities around the country, around the state rather, by 2020. Now in Los Angeles, the reduction will have to be much less than that because we've been really effective here. You probably know that in Los Angeles, we use the same amount of water now as we used in 1987. A million more people, same amount of water. But that's not true around the state. And my legislation makes clear that it needs to be true. For example, my chief of staff lives in Sacramento. She has a 90-year-old house. She bought it three years ago. She's installing the first water meter ever in the history of the house. So some parts of the state just turn it on, don't pay for it. Other parts of the state aggressively conserve it. The whole state needs to conserve it. This was a big bill. The governor did a signing ceremony on this bill recently. It was so important. Other legislation that really matters. As you know, before I was on the city council, I used to direct Bethsetic Legal Services. It's a free legal services program, mostly for senior citizens and people who are disabled. 50,000 people came to us when I ran Bethsetic. I've been very concerned during that time and since about new laws to protect seniors. One law I wanted to write ever since I ran that setting is a law to require that nursing homes post ratings of their quality of care in their windows. That legislation was signed by the governor this year. I'm very pleased with that. I also wrote legislation this year that the governor signed to restore money to a program that had been zeroed out of the budget, a program that is the only one in the state to go into nursing homes and investigate claims of abuse and neglect. I wrote other legislation this year. There's a new law, for example, if you're contemplating a reverse mortgage that gives you new rights. So very focused on senior citizens issues. Another law I want to mention to you that I wrote, it's been a very productive year in terms of, of legislation that I consider top priority legislation. Another law I wrote this year is a law that I hope never touches any of you, but nonetheless, 
it was so important that the New York Times wrote about it, as did the Wall Street Journal. If you steal a small item, a box of Twinkies from a 7-Eleven, you're entitled to a lawyer. But if your child is going to be taken from you, if you're the victim of domestic violence, or your house is at stake, you in the United States don't have a right to a lawyer. So I wrote legislation, it's the first of its kind in the country, as part of a national movement that would assure, we're taking on a pilot project in California to assure that if the basic necessities of your life are on the line, that you have a right to have a lawyer. It's a big deal for probably no one in this room, but for people you may never meet, a grandmother whose house is being stolen from her, a woman who's being the victim of domestic violence, a senior citizen suffering elder abuse in a nursing home, this law will transform their lives. So, whether it be drunk driving and trying to reduce the deaths on the road, water conservation to ensure we have water for the future, transportation issues from before, nursing home legislation, protecting seniors, I tried to do work this year, as every year, that really matters in practical terms in people's lives. And so what's happening now? In, I chair the Assembly Committee on the Judiciary. As part of that role, I have not only worked on these bills, but something else. When I was, before I got back in public politics I, as a, a member of the Assembly, I was a lawyer downtown. One night I was driving home, if you would think of the 110 freeway going south, it splits on the Santa Monica. You can go to the right and go west. You can go to the east by turning left. Ahead of me during rush hour, by about five car lengths, was a pickup truck. The pickup truck driver must have realized as he was in the right lane that he needed to go east instead of west, and he swerved much too fast. And the car ahead of me, the truck, turned over in the middle of rush hour. And I actually was a commentator on National Public Radio for a while, and I did a commentary. It was a very cool thing to see the response. I got out of my car, pulled to the side of the road, gestured to the people behind me who got out of their cars, and suddenly this team began to emerge of people trying to protect the people who had been in the, in the cab. And I went, went over to the cab, and I spoke to the driver, who spoke exclusively Spanish, as did his wife and the little girl situated between them, upside down in the cab. My Spanish was good enough that I asked him if he was in good enough condition to get out of the cab, and he said he wanted help, and so I helped him out of the window of the cab. Then we helped his daughter and his wife, and other people had called emergency medical services. The girl was clearly in shock, but by the time EMS got through, everything was okay. Here's the point of the story. Last year, in December, the California Supreme Court issued a ruling that said that people who act as good Samaritans but don't provide medical aid are potentially to be, going to be sued. They're not immune from litigation. So I wrote a law that really brought home my prior experience. A law that says if you act responsibly at the scene of emergency, you can't be sued because we want to encourage people to intervene in emergencies. I talked to the police and fire folks. I thought they would have some concerns about that bill. And they said something quite different. They said to me, in a state like ours, we have earthquakes and fires and floods, and we don't have enough personnel who are experts and trained to help all the time. We need citizens to come to the aid of others. So I've been trying to work on things of consequence for you. In addition to that work, I chair a new committee. Most members of the assembly chair a committee or none. I actually chair two now. I was asked to chair the assembly committee to reform California government. It's a big deal. It just started this fall. We've had two meetings so far. It's so unusual that we decided to meet jointly. There's now a new Senate committee, chaired by a friend of mine, Mark Desonier, and I chaired the Assembly side. Our meetings are around the state. Our next meeting's in Los Angeles on December 8th at UCLA. Here is what we're trying to focus on. Our budget process needs to change. We need more bipartisanship in the way we do business. We need to focus